In this video, I'm going to show you how to generate a graph, a graphical output of coding potential for your phage using the program called GeneMark. And I really want to emphasize that this information is straight out of the annotation guide, pages 45 to 48. So keep your annotation guide open as you carry out this procedure. So the learning goals for this video are for you to, on a very basic level, understand the role of coding potential in predicting genes. And we'll learn in more detail about coding potential in our second Friday lecture. Um, but the main goal is for you to be able to generate this coding potential output using both a heuristic model and a host train model. Okay, first of all, what is coding potential? So you know that there are 20 amino acids, but for any given amino acid, usually there's more than one codon that codes for that amino acid. And a really good example is arginine, for which there are six different codons. Now, different organisms prefer certain codons over other codons. And so you can imagine that a genome that has very, very high GC content might prefer some of these codons that are full of C's and G's rather than A's and U's. Okay, so codon bias is produced in an organism, um, a, an organism's genome or a virus's genome because they prefer certain codons and this produces a pattern of codons in regions of the genome that code for a gene. And so we can use that pattern of codons to detect genes in genomes that have not yet been annotating, annotated. So codon potential, or coding potential rather, uh, it can be detected by computer programs that do one of two things. They determine the potential for coding in a genome um, based on the codon usage detected in the genome, so they do it on the fly, or they can detect coding potential based on known codon usage from an organism like M. smigmatis. So the heuristic model uses codon usage patterns within the genome being analyzed. So it does it on the fly. For QC, it would look at codon usage pattern in the longest open reading frames of the QC genome and then go and look for those same codon usage patterns in other parts of the genome to detect more genes. This is the type of um, model that's used to predict genes by Glimmer and by GeneMark within DNA Master. It is also used by GeneMark in a different program outside of DNA Master called GeneMark S. And so we will be using all of these. Obviously we use Glimmer and GeneMark and DNA Master, but we will ask you also to produce graphical output put uh, using GeneMark S. We will also ask you to generate coding potential output based on a particular host bacterium. So for T. Brady 12, maybe QC, although uh, you'll find out later why that's difficult. But for QC and T. Brady 12 and Shere Khan, phage that were isolated using M. smegmatis, we can look at the codon usage pattern in M. smegmatis and use that to detect coding potential in, say, the cube genome. Um, so we might talk about gene mark smeg, coding potential based on codon usage in M. smegmatis, or gene mark TB, coding potential based on codon usage in tuberculosis. If you're working with Sally Special, then you're going to want to generate coding potential in Sally Special that's based on our Gordonia species. So this is an example of output from GeneMark, and we'll talk in more detail about how to analyze this type of output. But really quickly, these are the six different reading frames in the first 2,000 base pairs of a genome, I forget which. And what we're seeing here is a detection of coding potential and so here is very likely a gene um, just between uh, 600 and 800 base pair uh, coordinates. This is probably a gene, and this is probably a gene, okay? So by looking at coding potential, this is one piece of evidence 
that would support the presence of genes in these locations within the genome. Now I want to show you how to generate this type of output. So we'll get rid of the PowerPoint. Um, again, I want to emphasize that I have my genome annotation guide open. And the first thing I'm going to ask you to do is go to the phage page um, for the phage that you are interested in analyzing. And generating a, a gene mark output, for example, for T. Brady 12 is super easy because there's buttons at the top of the page that will do this for us. So we can generate G, uh, coding potential for T. Brady 12 that's based on MSMEG by pushing this button or based on tuberculosis by pushing this button. And we can also generate gene mark S coding potential uh, that was determined um, from the T. Brady 12 genome itself, the heuristic model. So um, all you have to do is push the button and waiting, and it will give you um, a PDF showing the coding potential throughout the entire genome. And all you need to do is download it and save it uh, and give it a name that is meaningful. So if this is gene mark S, um, I'm going to call this T. Brady 12, oops, 12 um, SMEG, uh, G mark S, G M S. So that when I see this file, I know which coding potential it is. And I'm going to save this on my desktop for now since I have it saved elsewhere. I can go back and generate coding potential based on M SMEG. Okay. And again, give it a meaningful name. Let's see. Instead of calling it S, this time I'm going to call it SMEG and save that. And so anyway, you get the, you get the, the point here. There is um, another way for people looking at Gordonia phage, or maybe you want to use a different species of mycobacterium to look at coding potential in CUKE. Then you need to go to the GeneMark um, homepage itself, and you can get there um, either by clicking on one of these um, addresses in your annotation guide, although I think this one is incorrect, What's easiest is for you to go to the PhagiaDB useful links, which is found up here in resources, and you click on links. And I'm going to look for ORF locators. Um, GeneMark, the heuristic model, will again give you GeneMark S output. Um, but if you want the host trained for a specific host that's not present on the top of the phage page, then you click here. You choose the file that you want to annotate, I mean, that you want to analyze. Um, and actually, I'm going to go to, I'm going to go to, I'm going to do it for Sally Special. I'm going to, I'm going to upload the FASTA file for Sally Special. Click. I'm going to choose the species. And I don't want to, I don't want to use E. coli for sure. Um, if I were doing something in, in mycobacterium, I'd come all the way down here, and there's lots of different mycobacterium species we could use. But since this is our Gordonia phage, I am going to go to the one Gordonia species uh, that is listed here, which is Gordonia bronchialis. So Gordonia terre is not an option here, so the next best thing I can do is choose a different Gordonia species. So I've chosen this. I've got my FASTA file. I want PDF output, and I'd like the results emailed to me. And all I have to do now is say start gene mark. And so this will take a minute or so, um, and the output will end up in my mailbox. I actually have output put from um, T. Brady 12 that was emailed to me, and I can click on that. Um, and again, here is the um, oh, here's Gordonia phage. It came really quickly. So here's the output for, for the Gordonia phage. And again, save this in a place that's easy to find.